Backspace, backspace. So it is logging all of our keystrokes. Every keystroke you type, passwords, personal messages, confidential information could be silently captured without you even knowing. This is done using key loggers. Hello and welcome. My name is Simon and I'm an ethical hacker. And behind the camera lens is none other than the great cameraman Clint. Cameraman Clint, say hello to the people. Hey you guys. By the end of this video, you'll know the basics of key logging and how to make your own using C++. But before we get started and you guys get any funny ideas, please know that this video is strictly for educational purposes only. The reason why we bring these videos out is so that you guys better understand these threats and how to defend against them. So if that sounds good, let's dive right into the video. You are typing out your bank password, thinking that you are secure, but in the background there's a process running logging every keystroke you type. Pretty scary, right? A keylogger can capture everything from passwords to personal messages without you even knowing. Don't worry, we're gonna show you how it works, ethically of course. Let's dive right in. Okay, so let's get into the programming. So first things first, we're gonna need to include our libraries. So the first one is going to be the IO stream, and that is just the standard input output library. Though it's not gonna be used in this code, we still need to include it. Then the next one is going to be the F stream, which is allows for file handling to write keystrokes into a log file. And then the last one that we need for this program is going to be the Windows dot H. So this one allows for Windows specific API functions for keyboard hooking and more basically. So that's what we need to get the keys and stuff. Cool. So then we need the main function and that's just going to look like this. So Codium's got me typing out a lot of other stuff that I don't need right now. Uh, I'm just going to return zero so that we know that the program works correctly. Cool. And that's an O. Okay. So we've got the boilerplate code out of the way. So now let's get into a function that we need to log keystrokes to a file. And we can call that log keystroke. Very unique. I know. So that function is going to take in a key as a parameter which will be the key that you type on the keyboard cool so we need to create an of stream object to handle writing to a file so to do that we're just gonna call it just like that cool and we're gonna call our one log file instead of just file okay and then we're going to open our file and we're gonna open the file keylogger.txt in a pen mode so this is gonna be the file that we put all of the keys that the keyboard is pressing into. Okay, and now we need to check which keys are pressed. So to do that, we're gonna go F key equals, we start with the back. Back, so this is the backspace one. And then log file will append the backspace message as you can see there to the file and then if that isn't so let's just fix up the function there so that if that isn't pressed and a different key is pressed we're going to handle that now by just saying key and then vk and return let's do return Cool. As you can see, I've got all of the keystrokes that I've written there. And then just if you direct your attention to the bottom here, I am logging alphabetic keys and numbers as the character itself here, over there. And then down here, I'm just logging other keys using their virtual key code and closing the file off. Cool. So now we need a hook procedure to capture keystrokes. And to do that, we're going to call our result. Let me just caps lock our result so our result is the return type of the function it represents the result of the message processing the our result value is passed on to the other hooked functions or back to the system for further processing then we need the callback keyword so this keyword indicates that the function uses the callback calling convention it's required basically for the windows api functions which is what we're going to use now and then let's give our function name which will just be keyboard process cool and codium is going to come in clutch there with the parameters that we need so encode is just going to indicate the event type um so if the encode is greater than or equal to zero we're going to process the message if the encode is less than zero we're going to pass the message to the next hook but i'll show you that now then w param is a message identifier for the event that occurred it helps identify whether the key was pressed or released and then our param is appointed to the the hook structure that contains information about the key event cool so let's 
let's write some code for that. So we're going to check now if the end code, the event is greater than or equal to zero. And then if it is, we're going to check if a key was pressed down. So WM key down, check if a key was pressed down. Cool. So now we need the L param point to the KBDLL hook struct structure that contains information about the key event. So to do that, we need to call that. So KBL hook struct. Cool. I'm just going to change the name there because key info is a bit vague. So we are going to just call this and also put the pointer here. We're going to call this P key board. So the keyboard. <laughs> and then we're casting it to Alparam. Cool. So we cast Alparam to the KBDLL hook struct pointer. So that's what this line of code is doing. And then we need a key. So in key equals our pointer and vk code so codium got it for us there so this extracts the virtual key code from the structure and then we need to log the key pressed using the keystroke function which codium also picks up for us cool so that just logs the key pressed using the keystroke function and then let's close our if statement and then let's return core next hook x which passes the hook information to the next procedure in the chain so just return cool so this ensures that the event is passed on to the other hooks or processes Okay, so we got the functions all set up. Now we just need to call it in our main function. So to do that, we need to call the hook. So we need to set the hook for keyboard events using the keyboard flag for the low level keyboard hooks. Let's just call that keyboard hook. Cool. And then Codium's got us. Cool. So yeah, set Windows hook X WH keyboard allow keyboard process I'll now and then we can put this one as zero here yeah so this is just what i said now it sets the hook for keyboard events using the keyboard allow flag uh, for the low level keyboard hooks cool let us just get a little bracket there because i was like why is that an error <laughs> okay so now we need a message cool. okay so we need a while loop and Codium's got us sorted for that. Cool. We're going to enter an infinite loop to keep the program running and listening for all keyboard events. Got the message there. Translate and dispatch. Cool. So translate virtual key messages into character messages. That is what the first function does. And then dispatch message is going to dispatch the message to the Windows procedure. Cool. And then let us unhook the keyboard when the program ends. Awesome. So that's what we need for our keylogger. So I'm gonna save that and we can start running the program. Okay guys, so I've just opened up a PowerShell window in the directory where the keylogger file is and we just need to compile that. So G++ M32 for 32-bit architecture. The output file is just gonna be keylogger and then the C++ file. So keylogger.cpp. Cool, so that's just going to compile it for us now. Awesome, so you see it's over there. So I'm gonna just run that keylogger.exe. So that is running now. So we can go back to the demo file and I'm gonna type password on my keyboard right now and go check out this. As you can see, it is appending the files here let me just type password again i'm literally just typing it onto my keyboard so don't save that we can open the powershell window to show you so i will open another one here powershell cool so password is one two three four five six and let's see what our key logging file shows us so you can see look it's got the first password, backspace, password when I press tab, control, PowerShell, enter, password is 1234, backspace, backspace. So it is logging all of our keystrokes. And if you want to stop it, just press control C there, control Z. So that is how the keylogger works. We have covered what a keylogger is and how they work. Well done on making it to this part of the video. There are many different types of viruses out there. If you guys want to see how we made a file infector, the video for that will be on the screen somewhere. Guys, if you found this video helpful, please consider hitting the bell icon as it helps the channel out. And with that, happy hacking and Clint and I will see you in the next one. Peace.